Hi, this is Andrea Earle with your Canvas tip of the day, number 34, creating formula questions in new quizzes. Let's get started. Let's start by creating a new quiz. I'm gonna create a quiz and I'm gonna choose new quizzes as the option if you have the choice. For this quiz, I'm gonna call it basic edition stories. For this example, I want to give, I want my students to take a quiz practicing their basic addition skills, but I want each student to have a slightly different question. So let me show you how it works. I start by opening the new quizzes and it lands me on the settings menu. I'm going to have this quiz worth five points. It's going to be in my assessments category. Notice that the external tool new quizzes is already loaded and there's nothing I have to do there. I'm now going to slide down and click the build button. Now, if I want to change my total points later, I am going to have to go back to that settings menu to change it. I'm going to start by typing some instructions. Please answer the following questions. And I'm going to say using numbers only. I'm now going to hop down to the plus button and I'm gonna choose a formula question type. For the question title, you really don't need to put anything, but it will help you sort your questions later. So I'm just gonna say basic addition stories. Now here's where I put the question in. So here's my story. Sam went to the store and bought some amount of bananas. Then he bought Another amount of apples. How many pieces of fruit did Sam buy in all? So I want the first number to be a number to be something, and the second number to be something, and I want students to add those two together. Now notice I put an X and a Y for the two variables. In order to let the computer know that X is a variable, I need to put a back tick in front of and behind the x, which turns it into a variable. And you'll notice the x now populates as a variable down below. I want to do the same thing for y. So I'm going to come up here and put the back tick in for y. And the back tick, also known as the accent mark, can be found under the tilde, usually in your numeric row on the top left-hand corner of your keyboard. So now based on my students, maybe I just want them to do one digit addition. So maybe the smallest number I want them to be add is zero and maybe the largest is 10. Or maybe I wanna keep it at nine for this. I'm gonna do the same thing for the second number. What's the minimum? And maybe the maximum this time will be 10 and I don't want any decimals. Now I need to write the formula, and my formula in this case is x plus y. Now as I slide down, how many different solutions do I want? 200 is the default. That's a lot of solutions, and we know that just adding these, you know, these numbers with these variables won't give me that many, but let's go ahead and generate anyway. Now you can see we were only able to find 110 solutions. That means there are 110 different possibilities or problems my students will get when they, when they um, answer this question. Here are all the possible solutions, all computer generated. And all I have to do now is click done. Now you can see it's showing one, one bananas and nine apples. How many pieces of fruit did Sam buy in all? And the answer is 10. But when I assign this to students, each student will get a different problem. Let's see what that looks like in the preview. So here's my fake student. And this student has four bananas and zero apples. And of course we know four plus zero equals four. And we submit the answer. The student sitting next to him will get a different combination of numbers. Remember, there are 110 possible questions the students could get.
Now, if I like that question, I like that formula, I can duplicate that coming up to where the pencil is, that would be edit, but instead I want this double plus sign. And now I've duplicated the question. And now I can just change it just a little bit. I simply changed the name of the person, what they bought. And then I also changed, instead of in all, all together. It helps students get practice with different vocabulary words that also mean addition. And again, I can change my minimum and maximum. Maybe this time I want the minimum to be two and the maximum to be 12. And for this minimum, maybe I'll keep it at zero and 10. I slide down, I generate the possible solutions in that now there are 121 for this problem. And I hit done. And now I have two problems where students will be getting different, different questions which of course have different answers than the person sitting next to them. Now this was obviously a first grade example, but formula questions can be used with more complicated algebraic examples as well. Let me show you an example. This time we're gonna look at a linear equation. My students always ask me, when am I ever gonna use this in real life? Well, let me tell you, hiring a plumber, I definitely use linear equations. And let me show you what I mean. All right, so here's my story. My plumber charges $150 for the service call and $75 per hour. What will the total cost be if he works for X hours? So I'm gonna go ahead and add those, um, the tick marks. And the only variable I have is X. And so maybe I'm gonna have, obviously he's not gonna work zero hours. So he works one hour to four hours, or maybe even six hours. Maybe it's a really big job. All right, so the formula, I'm gonna do X times 75, and I'm gonna use parentheses for the multiplication, and then add the $150, and it equals something. Slide down, I'm gonna generate possible solutions. Oh, I believe it's a star for the multiplication. Here we go, and then I generate, no, it says it's an invalid formula. Let me get rid of the equal sign. There we go. All right. So X times 75 for the hourly plus the service call fee. And I've generated all the possible answers. There's not really that many for this particular question, but it's still more than one. And then I hit done. And there you have it. Of course, I can change these numbers. I could change the hourly. So actually, let's make it a little harder. So I'm gonna come down here. My plumber charges $150 for the service call plus X dollars or Y dollars per hour. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the tick marks there, the backwards tick marks, Y dollars per hour. So I still want him to work between one and six hours, but maybe the service is between 20 and $50 per hour. How's that? Or maybe 25? And that seems kind of low. How about 35 to $65 an hour? Let's see what that does. And now I have X times Y in my formula plus the $150 service fee. And now I generate, there we go. And there's all the possible solutions. So it's a lot more difficult. You can see a lot more, more options that students might receive. When I'm done, I hit done. And now I have an even more difficult question. My plumber charges $150 for the service call and $60 an hour. What is the total cost if he works for five hours? And so you can see because this is um, the rich content editor in here, I could put anything I want. I could put an image of a plumber. I could, you know, do an overflowing toilet. I could do anything um, to make it more interesting. But each student's going to get a slightly different answer. The one caveat here is they will not be able to write the total in dollars. They'll just have to, to say the numeric answer. So I could say, what will the total cost be for X hours? the 
total cost will be blank dollars. And I can do it that way. They That way they know it's just that all they're putting in there is the numeric answer. And of course I said that in the directions. Now for my last example is something I used in social studies, a presidential election cycle. It takes 270 electors to elect a president. So in this case, I said the Green Party already has X electoral votes. How many more electoral votes do they need to get their candidate elected as president of the United States? So my, for my formula, I'm gonna say for X, X could be 10, it could be, um, I don't know, 115, but my formula is 270 minus X. Let's see what we get when we generate. Okay, that's not going to work, is it? So do you see how I got negative numbers? So obviously that's not going to work. 270 minus X. Oh, there we go. I'm not sure what I did wrong the first time. All right, 270 minus X. And of course, make sure everything's reasonable. So maybe I want to even give them a bigger number here. Maybe start with, you know, 35 and maybe go up here to 215 just to, to add a little more variety. Every time you change the variables, the minimum, maximum, you do need to generate new, new solutions. And then you hit done. And there you have it. Using the formula question in new quizzes to add variety to your math assessments. Thank you for watching.